everyone. Welcome to another episode of Aerospace Engineering with Brian McNulty. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some electronics, uh, specifically a drone, a quadcopter 250 drone, and uh, one that I put together myself. And so we're just going to take a look at some of the hangups that I encountered when doing this project and some of the safety precautions that you should take if you decide to take on the task and uh, also just I'll give a general overview of the parts and the tools that you might need in order to construct such a thing. I think a majority of the people watching this might be watching it for reference as they too are constructing a drone or want to in the near future and so what I'm going to go through first is some of the things that I did wrong that I will change on my next build. So let's get started with that. The first thing I'm going to talk about are these, um, I guess, quote, landing gears, unquote, here. Um, when I got them in the kit, I didn't know how to put them on because there's no screws or anything and they're not very flexible. So they don't, at first, if you don't apply enough force when you put it around the more narrow part of this arm next to the motor, as you can see if I look from the bottom, um, there is a, there's a part where it's more narrow and that's where you want to kind of clip this thing around and you have to apply some force uh, without breaking it, but they are flexible enough to where I was able to get them on obviously. And so don't let that get you stuck. Uh, if you if you've been thinking about that you just have to apply some force and then slide them down uh, to the wider part of the arms <clears throat> Another problem I ran into and it wasn't it would have been a problem if uh, a friend of mine who is a mechanic he If he wouldn't have told me this would have been a problem. I think um, in the future so as you can see I've got these these arms screwed on here using uh, screws and nuts and um, you can see more specifically that the nuts are on the top. Now another thing I want to mention while we're talking about nuts is that the flat side of the nut goes on the surface and the beveled side of the nut goes away from the surface. Uh, this just gives it a better grip. But that's not what I originally wanted to talk about. That's not my main point. My main point was I put these on the top of the arm rather than on the bottom here um, because when this thing lands in rough terrain or something like that, I don't want the nuts getting messed up. Uh, and they will because as you can see they're pretty they're at like a sharp angle and they will just catch the dirt upon impact much better than will these rounded screw heads and even if the rounded screw heads get damaged it's not that big of a deal because all i'll have to do is remove the nut so that was what he pointed out to me and i thought that it was worth taking the whole thing apart and uh, reinstalling those 16 nuts to be on the top and protected on the inside of the frame. Another issue that I had was regarding wiring. Uh, as you can see, the volume with contained within this frame here is not very much and uh, you will have a lot of wires. It's important to mention that I don't even have the camera or the antenna hooked up yet. And uh, those come with their own wires and, and stuff, so they're going to take up space as well. So I, with this build, I really wanted to make the wiring look super clean. So what I did, which I would not recommend doing, is I cut the leads uh, from the brushless motor. I cut them super short and just soldered them directly to the ESC. Not only did I have to remove the heat shrink that came with the original CSC, take it apart and remove the leads that were attached to it, but also now I will never be able to easily change out these motors if I wanted to test them using this configuration. And so that's why I wouldn't recommend doing that. The only reason why I did it this way is like I said, I wanted the wires to look super clean and I didn't want them to be folding in every which direction and um, zip tied to the frame. I just thought that might look sloppy. Let me know what you guys think about that. 
those are some of the issues that I ran into. Don't let that prevent you from starting this build yourself. The whole purpose of engineering in the first place is to be creative. And you will run into problems, but since you're creative, you can solve those problems with creative solutions. And so that's kind of what I want to drive home about the having issues part. And I also just wanted to put that up for people. Uh, maybe they don't have to waste as much time uh, you know, trying to figure out a solution. They can think about these things before they actually assemble the frame. I want to talk about safety now. Uh, these are dangerous machines and can be, and safety should always be exercised when you're messing with these things. You might think, it's just a toy, you know, it's fine. Uh, what's this guy talking about? Well, those propellers, which shouldn't be news to anybody who's building a drone, are moving very fast when that thing is powered on. That moves fast enough to completely tear your skin and it can result in some pretty serious injury. So I have a quick anecdote regarding safety and specifically regarding the safety of drones. About two years ago when I first built one of these things I built it with my friend. He was a classmate that I had and we decided that we would join the STEM club. Well, during the STEM club we were tasked with building these drones. Now, we had two of them that we could potentially build, but as time constraints tightened towards the due the deadline, we ended up just building one of them uh before the race that we were supposed to have at the end of the semester on Earth Day. I think at that time both of us were uh, attending college for like 17 credit hours each and um, we were doing this extracurricular drone activity on top of it for the honors project and we were very stressed out and uh, we were moving pretty quickly and we were learning things very fast. So the day of the race comes and my partner, um, he decided that he was going to assemble the second drone as a backup just in case the first one didn't work. And he did it almost entirely in one night by himself. Um, and remember, this is not an experienced drone builder. He, he didn't know what he was doing, but he built it and he stayed up all night doing it. So I think some of you might see where this is going. As the race day approached um, and we were setting up, setting the drone up and getting it ready for launch, uh, he shows up frantic and, and just all frazzled. And he's been up all night working on the thing. He got it done. I commend the guy. Um, but he had one thing left to do and he, it was to program the flight controller with the software where you plug the the drone into a computer via USB cable and you calibrate the speed uh, at which each motor will turn. So he did that and uh, he didn't take off the propellers. So here we are setting up the event. I'm hurriedly doing other things like getting the presentation ready and stuff like that. And he's standing next to me and he's got this thing plugged into the computer. And I wasn't paying attention to what he was doing and uh, he ended up turning it on full speed and uh, the drone took flight. He caught it with his hand and he looks at me with this look on my his face and I see what's going on here. I've, I've held this drone and I'm like, yeah, that's a hell of a catch, dude. And, uh, and he's holding it from the top and uh, I just see blood everywhere on the ground about two seconds later. I immediately shut the controller off and uh, he had to go to the hospital and he couldn't even participate in the presentation or the race. And so I was the only person representing our college for this uh, drone race because we didn't follow safety precautions. That day could have turned out much better for both of us. The main point there is you need to take off the propellers before doing any calibration or any testing of the drone at all. 
make sure that it is incapable of hurting anybody. And with those uh, propellers on on it spinning that fast, uh, you're at very high risk of danger. So I do recommend caution there. Now we're going to step out to the garage and we're going to look at some of the materials and the tools and instruments that make this build much easier uh, than if you otherwise did not have them. First instrument that I want to mention uh, that's been super helpful to me, uh, no pun intended, are these helping hands. Uh, you can pick them up at any electronics store. You can see that they have these... these uh, little clips right here so that you know you could put a printed circuit board on here and then get a magnified image of it and uh, you could just solder away speaking of soldering uh, I might as well just show you this right here so this is like a basic soldering station you can get a way better one but this one was cheap it was like 40 bucks uh, has a low setting at 20 watts and a high setting at 40 watts you want to make sure to get one that's pretty decent. I bought one for like seven bucks from Lowe's and it did not work on this flux that I have. So get yourself a soldering iron and uh, make sure you have your wet sponge so you can clean it off. And also I would recommend having a razor blade um, because uh, that's useful for just scraping the, the excess black stuff uh, off the burnt flux off of the the end of the needle here you want to clean that off and keep the keep the tip uh, as clean as possible so soldering iron is useful to have it should be no surprise that since we're using a soldering iron we also need flux here I have two different types uh, basically I have a thin one that's for obviously smaller like circuit boards and things like that, smaller wires that need to be attached, smaller gauge wires that is, and then this is for thicker gauge wires. Uh, this is probably gonna be the one that I use when I connect the battery uh, to the larger cables uh, that connect to the power distribution board. So it's useful to have you know a thin one and a thick one. This right here, it looks like it says it's it's uh, 1.6 millimeters and uh, this stuff over here I believe is 1.1 millimeters and so it's useful to have two different sizes because they can be used for two different applications now since both of those are uh, 60 40 flux what that means is that uh, the atomic composition of the flux is 60% uh, selenium and 40% lead. So it's important that you do not repeatedly expose yourself to the inhalation of the chemicals that are emitted from burning this material. This thing has been extremely helpful. Um, I just got all these tools in a kit and you can see we got like these reverse pliers. So you apply pressure to open them and then you let go and then now I'm just holding a screw or a nut or whatever, you know, check this out. So this is super helpful. You don't have to worry about squeezing the pliers, but you can still hold something in them. So that was super useful, I thought. Um, then we have just like these scrapers and stuff like that. You can use them as like little pry bars or, you know, uh, kind of pushing maybe uh, solder off of a lead with the desoldering braid. And I'll go through what the desoldering braid is next. Um, and so basically this is just a tiny electronics kit. It has a little uh, steel brush there uh, for cleaning, obviously in tight spaces. And so, yeah, that's super helpful. You're going to want to definitely pick one of those up uh, from local electronics store. Right? Any of them should, should carry it. I mentioned a desoldering braid. Maybe I'll do a video uh, showing how to properly use it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but um, it basically just removes the solder. It's a desoldering braid. And so... You take a piece of it, and if you have a, a solder, you can wipe it off with this stuff after you heat it up with the soldering iron.
electrical tape. This stuff is awesome. As you saw in the earlier section of this video when I was showing the drone, you saw that I had electrical tape around the ESCs. And you know what? I might actually wrap the ESCs to the motor arms using the electrical tape as well just to give it that extra sturdiness. So electrical tape is super useful uh, in these applications. It's just good to have it laying around. These are zip ties. They're important to have because you can move wires out of the way and uh, temporarily so that you can work on certain spaces in, in the drone. These uh, have been described to me by other drone builders as your best friend. So um, they're important. Make sure to pick up some of these and uh, that way you can have a clean uh, and accessible workspace. This is a hot glue gun and so um, what it does is it basically can seal off the circuits. You can put glue on the circuits if you want to. I don't think I'm going to do that because it looks sloppy, but you can do that to have a more sealed circuit like on the power distribution board or the flight controller. And here we just have the various components that uh, Got some heat shrink here. This is good for when you connect two wires together, you splice them together. Uh, you can use this at the connection point and uh, the wires will no longer be exposed to the outside environment. It's essentially an insulator that you can install. In here I have these billet connectors. We have female and male pieces. And so those are for when you splice wires and you want to connect and disconnect them. Uh, as is the case, uh, with my drone, I do not have these, and so I cannot remove the motors easily. I can't just snap them on and off to test new ones out. I have more heat shrink here, more solder, and that looks like that's about it. So those were some uh, tools and instruments that are really helpful in building uh, a drone. Um, all the hardware, like the M3 screws and the nuts and everything, that's going to come with the kit uh, if you do get a drone kit, which I would highly recommend, especially if you're new to this thing. Um, because then you just have all the parts right there and you don't have to do research and find out which parts you still need and is it the right one, you know. So typically in the kit they give you uh, all compatible pieces. And so that's going to be the section on uh, tools and instruments that are required to build the drone. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at installing the antenna and receiver, as well as hooking the camera up. And then we will program the flight controller, which will calibrate the speed of the brushless motors. Okay guys, so I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments in that section. Maybe stuff that I can improve on or whatever. Uh, thanks for viewing. I'll see you guys next time on another episode of Aerospace Engineering with Brian McNulty.